Compact car shoppers have an age-old choice between two popular nameplates, the Toyota Corolla and the Honda Civic. And we have the latest vintage of both cars here in a 2017 Honda Civic EX and a 2017 Toyota Corolla SE. So both of these cars are $23,000 with destination. So let's take a look at what you get in one and not in the other, but most importantly, which one should you buy? We'll start here with the styling, and uh, I don't know about you, Joe, but the front end of this Corolla, which was just refreshed for the 2017 model year, is just really bizarre looking. Uh, just a very big kind of almost gash of an open bumper here. Just a lot going on. It's a really aggressive look, but what I like up front are the standard LED headlights and also the LED daytime running lights. It has a very distinctive face, uh, but it's kind of like putting lipstick on a pig because while from here forward looks great, from the front fender back, it's just your regular old Corolla. I mean, this thing is in need of a big redesign uh, to get the kind of styling cohesiveness that you find in the Civic. Yeah, and that takes us over to the Civic, which uh, with this redesign here, the current generation Civic is actually just a really interesting looking car to look at in terms of its profile. Uh, a lot of kind of body back here over and around the rear fender. I don't know about you, but this kind of looks like a hatchback more than a sedan which is strange because they also offer a hatchback of this now, and it looks very similar. Uh, up front, what I really like uh, is this low hood. It's low and wide and has almost sports car-like proportions to it. So we're in the Corolla right now. Like the Civic, it's got a four-cylinder engine, a little bit smaller than the Civic's engine though, uh, and I'd say power is adequate. Yeah, you know, it has 132 horsepower. And it feels like 132 horsepower. <laughs> There's nothing exciting here, but at the same time, Almost more importantly, it doesn't feel underpowered. Yeah, it feels adequate. I mean, there's a continuously variable automatic transmission here, as well as in the Civic. Uh, and this kind of tries to mimic a traditional automatic transmission sometimes with kind of upshifts and downshifts. It just kind of winds around trying to make you feel like you're zooming around even though you aren't. Yeah, the car can be deceiving because it has that very aggressive front styling and these very aggressively bolstered seats but there's also not really a shred of sportiness in how it handles. Let's talk about these seats for a second though. Uh, these are really, really heavily bolstered seats. I think you mentioned uh, they're, they're, they're sort of confining. I mean, they kind of cramp you in, don't they? Yeah, I mean, I'm a skinny guy, look at me, but they feel like they are just really hugging me, like, like a real sports seat. I mean, they also have these sort of leatherette or vinyl bolsters here with actual cloth down the center. So you didn't actually get a real leather seat, but your passengers might think you did because these bolsters, which stick out a ton, uh, they're obviously clad in some kind of premium material here. Now, uh, in contrast to kind of the wild seats, is a very normal multimedia system. Uh, you've got your volume knob, you've got your tuning knob, uh, you've got you know some buttons around here, very large uh, display here, reasonably responsive. Physical controls. Nailed it, right? You got a volume knob, you got a tuning knob. That's what we ask for because you do have those capacitive controls where they do away with traditional knobs and dials. So while this gets a pass on just the tactile function of what we want, the software, the digital portion, it's just really not up to the Civic. Yeah, uh, pretty much uh, a lot of small cars these days even offer Apple CarPlay, Android Auto to smartphone integration systems. You plug in your either Android or your Apple iPhone into, uh, and uh, they work immediately. A uh, Toyota wants you to uh, download um, their Scout navigation system, and I don't know, just give me CarPlay, let me plug in. Nothing I have to download, it works right away. Yeah, I agree. You know, CarPlay and Android Auto, they're using the native navigation apps on your phone. I mean, you can buy a car without navigation, and with those, have navigation. Now, the way Toyota does with a Scout, GPS, you have to download the Scout app, and then you're using that app, um, which I've used, and it's fine, but I don't think it's as smart or sleek as Google Maps or even Apple Maps. All right, so we're in the Civic now, and it has a whopping 158 horsepower. But of course, it's not all about horsepower. That transmission makes a huge difference. Yeah, it's uh, also a CVT like in the Corolla, um, but not all CVTs are the same. And I gotta say, the Civics uh, really does a lot with the power that it has. Uh, it just kind of makes you feel like you're actually doing something with your right foot in terms of getting the revs to change. Uh, and, and it's just much more fun to drive. And this is the base engine, so it's a 2.0 liter. You also have the option of a turbocharged 1.5 liter. 
that's the engine you want. Yeah. I mean, there's no question there. If you can swing the 1.5 liter, get that. It's a reasonably fun car to really kind of throw around, actually. Uh, the steering, for one, is excellent. I mean, it's just a superbly quick uh, steering ratio. You just get into the corner, and, and what that means is, you know, even just a few degrees of turning immediately kind of repoints the nose. Um, it just makes it a lot of fun to toss around on winding roads. Yeah, it is planted. It rotates really nicely in the corners, and the, the greatest part is, I mean, I love driving this car. I, I think it's a blast to drive. Even with the CVT and the base engine, this thing just handles so well. It really just kind of dials up a higher degree of, of ride quality. You know, we talk about comfort versus quality, and ride quality in the Civic is really, really good. One thing, not so good, this thing right here, the center stack, the, the multimedia system. Uh, it's a touch screen here uh, in, in our test car. Um, reasonably responsive in terms of just getting around the menus and stuff, but there aren't actually any physical buttons next to the screen. Instead, you get all this capacitive touch junk right here, like a volume slider. Uh, there's capacitive touch buttons for a bunch of other shortcuts. There's no tuning knob. No. Um, now, there is a workaround. You have the volume thumb wheel on the steering wheel, and that very quickly, you swipe it fast and it mutes. And then you swipe it again, and the volume raises. So, not a big fan of uh, the need for that. Functionally, I think it works fine. But the fact that you need a workaround just to mute the stereo, I mean, I'm just not a fan of that. And a very cool visual part of the Civic's interior is this instrument panel here. It's got a very cool animation at startup, but shows a lot of useful information from a big old digital speedometer, tells you how fast you're going, uh, to kind of a sweeping needle for the tack, uh, and a lot of reconfigurable screens. Very rare that you get this outside of the luxury realm, and that it's this well done in a car as inexpensive as the Civic. Yeah, the Civic's interior as a whole is just a lot more stylistically impressive and that digital dashboard is the highlight. You know, the Corolla has a traditional analog tachometer and speedometer. This is not only digital, but it's digital done right. Now, the Corolla certainly has some value things going for it. Uh, first of all, all those safety features, uh, forward collision warning, uh, the lane sensing, all of that stuff is actually standard now in the 2017 Corolla, uh, and you get two free years of maintenance. All right, but for $23,000, it's your money. What are you going to spend it on? I don't know. I got to say, I think the Civic still has more utility, better quality, and it just drives better. So for my money, I think I'm going for the Civic. What about you, Joe? If we're talking just these two, it's going to be Civic, hands down. I mean, this thing's a riot to drive. And I mean, for 23 grand, you're getting a lot. And you add in the style. Yeah, it's subjective, but man, it's just interesting, that digital dashboard. And then you put the CVT in sport mode, and it doesn't really feel like a CVT. Civic, yeah. no question. Not even a close call here. Uh, pretty much Civic in agreement. Thanks for watching. Click here for more videos and here to subscribe to our YouTube channel.